Welcome to my channel. I am Dorika, and if you're new here, by all means, get comfortable. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Look around at the content that I create. If you find that you like it and you want more, please like and subscribe. And for my returning subscribers, I want to thank you for coming on back. Remember that you all are always welcome in my house. So in today's video, y'all, I'm going to be teaching you about DTF. If you've been on the fence about it and you're tired of weed and vinyl, then this is the video for you. I'm going to explain everything you need to know in this video. So if you want to know more about DTF, come on. Let's go. So what exactly is direct to film printing also known as DTF. DTF is a process that allows you to print designs onto a special film and then transfer them onto various garments such as cotton, nylon, treated leather, polyester, 50-50 blends and more light and dark fabrics. With DTF your possibilities are endless. So let's talk about what you're going to need to get started with DTF. You're going to need a printer you're going to need some RIP software, some DTF inks, some refillable cartridges, some film, some adhesive powder, a curing tool, a heat press, and once you get your printer, guys, you're going to have to do maintenance. There is no avoiding maintenance. So first, let's talk about printers that you can use for DTF. Your printer must have at least six ink channels or more for DTF. Some printers that can be used for DTF are listed below. This is just a few of the printers that I've listed. This is not all of them. There are more. Be sure to check online for more printers that you can use as the list updates often. In the picture here is my P800. It has nine ink channels. Four of them are for CYMK inks and the other four are for white inks. The ninth channel is turned off because I do not need that one. It is just filled up with cleaning solution. So let's talk about the software that you're going to need with DTF. For DTF printing, you must have a RIP software that can support CYMK and white colors. Your color profiling, ink level drop sizes, and factors contributing to an optimized print result are all determined by your RIP software. Examples of RIP software include CadLink and AcroRIP. There are more. I have just listed a few. Um, I, I personally use CatLink, and CatLink offers a 15-day trial. If you're interested in a 15-day trial of CatLink, let me know in the comments, and I'll get you that information. So let's talk about DTF inks. DTF inks are pigment inks that come in cyan, magenta, black, yellow, and white. The white ink lays down on top of the color inks once it is printed, serving as the foundation of the print. DTF ink can be purchased from various suppliers, but picture here is my ink from Big Boy Prints. The whitest of the whitest, the best of the best. And if you want to try some Big Boy Prints ink, I will link it below in the description. So for DTF, you're going to need some refillable cartridges. You must have a set of refillable cartridges compatible with your printer model. Four of the cartridges will be filled with your CYMK inks. The rest of the cartridges will be filled with your white ink. Your printer model will determine how many white cartridges you end up with. Always, always do your own research on your model. Picture here are my cartridges for my P800 and also my 1400. My P800 uses nine ink channels and my 1400 uses six ink channels. So in my P800, I have four uh, cartridges that use CYMK and my white cartridges, I have four of those that use only white ink. That ninth cartridge is for cleaning solution. I keep that channel turned off. I really don't need it. So my 1400 has six ink channels. So four of them will be for CYMK and the other two will be for white inks. So again, the number of white channels that you have will depend on your printer model. But you will always, always have CYMK and you will always have at least two white ink channels. 
So what is DTF film? DTF images are printed onto film. Film comes in various sizes. It comes in cut sheets or on rolls. It is available in high peel or cold peel. The better the quality of your film, the better your print results will be. So if you go out there and buy you some cheap film, you're going to get cheap results. You go buy you some good film, you're going to get good results. You get what you pay for. And personally, even if I buy high peel film, I peel it as a cold peel. I just get better results with that. So let's talk about adhesive powder. DTF powder comes in white and black powders. This is the adhesion that binds the colored pigments in the ink on your print to the fibers in your garment or whatever you are pressing onto. White powder is often used for light colored items and black powder is often used for dark colored items. For example, Let's say you're going to be pressing onto a light pink shirt or a light blue shirt. You're going to want to use white powder. And if you're pressing onto like a dark gray shirt or a black shirt, you're going to want to use black powder. And this just helps keep the fibers from showing through your print on dark colored items. So now let's talk about curing our print. So once you have sprinkled all that good old DTF powder over your print, it has to be cured before it can be pressed. Most people use a small oven or a heat press to cure it. I use an oven that I set at 250 degrees for about two minutes. However, there are other methods to cure. These are just a few. You can see in the picture, I use this oven and I put my DTF print in it and I put it on 250 for about two minutes. I got this oven from Walmart for about $120, but it was about almost a year ago. So I don't know if they still have any, but if they do, I will link it below in the description. But any other oven should do. This is just the one I use. And when your print is done, you want to look for like an orange peel look on the back of your print. And that's how you know it is ready. So after you've cured your print and you got that good old orange peel look on the back, it is time to press it onto your garment. For curing, I set my heat press at 280 degrees for about 15 seconds. Different presses may vary. You must find a temp and time that works well with your particular heat press. So there's one more thing I would like to add. If you cure a print that you're not yet ready to press onto a garment, just be sure to store it in a cool, dry place to keep the moisture out of it until you're ready to press it. So let's talk about maintenance. DTF printers are going to require maintenance. There's no getting around it. Whatever printer you get, you're going to have to do maintenance. Most of them are going to require that you print on them at least every one to two days to prevent the print head from clogging up. It is also a good idea to purchase a second set of cartridges to put print head cleaning solution in them and run it through your printer at least one to two times a week. This will help prevent your print head from clogging up. You should also clean your print head and capping station after you're done printing for today. Please research your printer model to see how this is done or if it even needs to be done on your particular printer model. I can't stress enough guys, please do your research on your particular printer model or on the printer model that you plan on purchasing. We've got to remember that we're putting ink into these printers that are not made to go in them. So of course we're going to have to do maintenance because we're making them do something that they were not made to do. So yes, we're going to have to do maintenance. Okay, y'all, so now that we've talked about it, let's be about it. Let's see this entire process in action. Come on, y'all, let's go. So we are over at my P800 printer. I have already gone into Photoshop and designed an image to print for an example to show you all the DTF print. Um, I've already signed it to my Catlink program. If you can see here, I've already designed my image in Photoshop 
and I have already sent it over to Catlink. And so now I'm going to print it from Catlink to my printer, the P800. A look at the image printing on my printer. If you can see the color ink is laying down first and then the white ink is going on top of the image. So that's what we mean by the white ink overlaying on top of the color ink. Okay, right here you can start to see our image coming out of the printer and notice that I have those post office boxes right here and that's to help my image come out of my printer straight. If you don't have something to make it come out straight, it's going to ruin your image. So you want to put some kind of box or something under there to make it come out straight. Now our image is done printing. As you can see, the white on the back. And here is the front. The colored side. So it's colored on the front. And the white is on the back. So let's go to our pottering station and put some powder on the back of it. So here we are over at my pottering station. And today I'm going to be using white powder. This is the container that I keep my powder in. And I'm going to be using white powder because I'm going to be using a yellow shirt to put the DTF print on. And if you're going to do a light shirt, then you're going to need white powder. And so I have our image in here. And so here's the cup right here. So I'm going to use this cup to sprinkle powder onto our image. I'm just covering the whole image with powder. And there it is covered. So now I'm just going to roll this back and forth. I'm just going to roll it back and forth until the entire image is covered. Just in a seesaw like motion. like that and now that our image is completely covered I'm going to just shake the excess powder off like so shake it off and now I'm shaking the excess powder off and that is how it looks after it's been powdered now let's take it to the oven to cure. Okay y'all, so here we are over at my oven. I'm gonna put my DTL print in the oven at 250 degrees for about two minutes. I'm gonna put it right here on this top shelf. And notice I have a piece of parchment paper at the bottom. And it's just kind of to help keep my image, my uh, film from touching the bottom of that uh, metal shelf. Two minutes. We'll wait for it to go off. Okay, so now our two minutes have passed. Now let's take it out and see what we got. Smoky, y'all, but it's still good. All right, and if you can see the back of our image, a little closer. It has that, let me turn the lights on so you can kind of get a good look at it, hopefully. Okay, and that orange peel look, if you can see that, that's the kind of look you want when you take it out the oven, that orange kind of peel look. And so, you can touch it. Nothing's going to come off on your hands. It's smooth. Bring it a little bit closer so you can see it again. And that's the look you want once you take it out the oven, y'all. You all over at my heat press. I have my heat press set to 280 degrees and I'm going to press this for 15 seconds. So but first I'm going to lint roll it because you want to get the lint off your garment. If not, your DTF printer is just going to stick to the lint that's on your garment. So you want to lint roll it. All right, that should be good. And so now I'm going to pre-press it. Um, to get the moisture out for about five to ten seconds. That should be good. I think I'm going to tighten my pressure just a little bit. And 
press it again because I still got some wrinkles in there. All right. That should be good. So now I'm just going to put the DTF print on and make sure it's centered. I don't have a T-square, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and hope it's centered. think that should be good. Let me slide it up. So we can get the whole image onto the heat press. Think that's good. So I'm just gonna cover this with some parchment paper. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna cover this with some Teflon. You can use parchment paper if you have parchment paper. And so I'm just gonna close it and let it go for about 15 seconds, y'all. All right, now that's done. So what we're gonna do now is let this cool for about a minute or two, and then we'll come back and peel the film off. So now that we let this cool for about a minute or so, we can go ahead and peel our film off and do a cool peel. There we are, and as you can see, there's nothing left on our film. There's nothing left on the film. So now, since we've taken our film off, what we want to do is do another press. After you take your film off, you want to do another press. Um, cover it with this Teflon sheet or parchment paper, whatever you have, and press for about another um, 10 seconds, 10 or 15 seconds, and you're done. Pressing it again, just make sure that is fully adhered to whatever you're pressing. And it's done. So there we have it, y'all. That is how you do DTF. It's DTF for me. I want to thank you for watching this video. It is my hope that I've answered many of your questions concerning DTF. But if I didn't, please feel free to leave your question below in the comments. I'm tired of waiting about it, y'all. It's DTL for me. I know, I know, you ain't ready to leave my house, as always. But guess what? You already know, guess what? You ain't got to go home, though, but you gonna have to go to my next video. Please like and subscribe. Until then, bye, y'all.